In the previous video, we learned about built-in modules. It is code that Node.js provides out of the box to help us build applications. In this video, let's take a look at our first built-in module, which is the path module. The path module provides utilities for working with files and directory paths. Let's understand how to work with it. I'm here in index.js, which is sort of our main module. It is empty to begin with. To make use of a built-in module, we first have to import it. And to import a built-in module, we use the require function. So at the top, const path is equal to require node colon path. Here, path is the name of our built-in module and we prefix it with node to indicate that it is a built-in module. It is also important to note there is no dot slash at the beginning. Once we have the module loaded, we can access the various properties and methods exposed by that module. Now the path module has about 14 different properties and methods, but in this video, we will focus on seven which are regularly used. For most of the examples, we will use the readily available double underscore file name and double underscore directory name convenience variables available in every module. Let me quickly help you recollect what they represent. Console log, double underscore file name, console log, double underscore directory name. If I run node index, you can see double underscore file name is a string that represents the full path to the file, index.js, and double underscore dir name is a string that represents the full path to the folder where index.js is located. And this is the Node.js folder. With this in mind, let's take a look at the different methods available on the path module. First, we have base name, which returns the last portion of a path. I'm going to duplicate the log statements and add path.baseName, passing in double underscore file name, and in the next line, path.baseName, passing in double underscore dir name. Save the file and run the code. And you see index.js, which is the last portion of double underscore file name, and Node.js, which is the last portion of double underscore their name. The next method is ext name, which returns the extension of the path. Copy paste the two lines and change base name to ext name. Run the code. And we see .js for double underscore file name and an empty string for double underscore dir name since it does not have a dot character in its path. Next, we have the parse method which returns an object whose properties represent significant elements of the path. Let's copy paste just the file name log statement and change ext name to parse. Run the code and we see an object with a few interesting properties. We have root of the path, the directory, the base, which is the last portion, the extension, and the name of the file. You can access these properties individually using the dot notation like you would do on any object. Along similar lines, we have the format method, which returns a path string given an object. So if I duplicate the line and invoke path.format, passing in path.parse, run node index, we should get back the original path string, which is double underscore file name. The next method is is absolute, 
which returns whether a path is absolute or not. Let me copy paste a log statement and change parse to is absolute. So path dot is absolute double underscore file name. Run the code and we see it is true. This path in fact is an absolute path. If I make a copy and pass in dot slash data dot json, save the file and run the code, we see it is not an absolute path. Dot slash is relative. The next method is join which joins all given path segments together using the platform specific separator as a delimiter and then normalizes the resulting path. Now that was a mouthful, so let's understand with a few examples. I'll comment out the code so far to focus only on path.join. Now path.join accepts one or more strings as arguments. For our first example, let's specify three arguments. Folder1, Folder2 and index.html. Run the code. And we see three strings joined by platform specific separator as a delimiter. This is forward slash for a Mac and backslash for Windows. If I add a forward slash at the start, run node index, you can see the path will also have a forward slash at the start. Simple concatenation as you can see. But path.join also normalizes the resulting path. So if I make a copy and add double forward slash for folder 2, run node index, you can see the resulting path still has only one forward slash. Similarly, if I make a copy and add dot dot slash to index.html, run node index, the resulting path has just folder 1 slash index.html. This is because we are saying from folder 2, jump one folder up and then concatenate index.html. Pretty neat if you ask me, but something I would avoid as this is pretty confusing. Finally, you can also have something like double underscore directory name and data.json. Run node index and you can see this will give the full absolute path to data.json. Hopefully, you're now clear as to how the join method works. Our final method is resolve, which resolves a sequence of paths or path segments into an absolute path. Now this is a little tricky to understand, so don't hesitate to rewatch the explanation a few times till it clicks for you. I am going to copy paste these five lines and replace join with resolve. I'll also comment out the join method to focus only on the resolve method output. All right, if I now run node index, we should see the log statements. Let's try understand the output. First thing to note is that in every log statement, the path starts with a forward slash indicating an absolute path. The path returned though is completely dependent on the arguments you pass in. If your arguments don't contain a forward slash, as is the case with our first statement, resolve will add an absolute path to the current folder and join the arguments. This is how we see from slash users all the way till index.html. 
On the other hand, if you specify a forward slash, resolve will return the absolute path from that forward slash, which is why we see slash folder one, folder two, and index.html. Now, if forward slash occurs later in the sequence, as is the case in statement three here, resolve will consider that as the root and ignore the previous path. This is why we see slash folder two slash index.html. This also explains the next statement where slash folder two is the root, but we go up one folder and hence only index.html is logged. Finally, since double underscore directory name is already an absolute path, we see that with data.json returned by the resolve method. Hopefully you're able to understand the differences. Now one last point I would like to mention here is that when importing a built-in module, the node prefix is optional. Even if I omit node colon, save the file, run the code node index, we see the same output. Node is smart enough to figure out that the imported module is a built-in module. However, the node protocol has many benefits. First, it makes it perfectly clear that the import is a Node.js built-in module. Beginners don't always realize this. Second, it makes the import identifier a valid absolute URL. Third, it avoids conflicts for future Node.js built-in modules. Since the Node protocol was recently introduced, you may see built-in module imports without the Node prefix. However, I recommend using it for all the benefits that you see listed here. To summarize, path is a built-in module that provides utilities to work with file and directory paths. We had a look at base name, extension name, parse, format, is absolute, join and resolve methods, all of which will come to our help when building real world applications. Thank you for watching. Please do consider subscribing to the channel and I'll see you in the next video.